well, would you look at that? We're back a week later. We're not taking months and weeks off between episodes. We are back with another episode of No One Asks Us. This is episode 64 overall, episode two of season two. Um, just not really sure how we're defining this now that we're in season two, but there's your statistics for you. I'm Craig Choate. That is the Logan Lee. It is the trade deadline. We are only minutes after the MLB trade deadline has passed, so we know or we should know within the recording of this episode, every deal that went down because there are no more waiver trades anymore with the new CBA. So we're going to recover some of that. We're going to cover some NFL breaking news. Uh, The NFL just could not let the MLB have one day. They had to break some big news that we're going to cover. And then just briefly a couple other things, nothing too crazy. A lot of time on baseball today, but thank you for joining us. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for consuming the content. However, you are consuming the content. Reach out to us at No One Asked Us Pod, at Craig W. Cho, at the Logan Lee on Twitter. Also on Facebook, No One Asked Us page, and Instagram at No One Asked Us Pod. Our Gmail is also on the YouTube, No One Asked Us 2021 at gmail.com. All of that in the, in the description of wherever you are listening to this episode. Chapters also in the description. If you don't want to hear our MLB talk, if you want to jump right to the Illini talk, you can. If you don't want to hear the Illini talk, if you just want to hear the NFL talk, you can jump right to it. We make it easy on you in the description as well, whatever you want to listen to. Logan, you are very close to your camera, leaning into your hands, your head into your hands. How's it going? I'm just reading. I'm just I'm just uh, taking in all of the stuff from the Internet and just can my, my mind just continues to be blown uh, over what's gone down uh, in the last few hours. So I'm great. I'm great, Craig. It's happy. I'm weekend? happy to be here. How was my weekend? Are you feeling uh, better? You had a little cough. I am feeling still. better. Yep. Okay. Feeling better. Uh, I mean, there's still moments, but I think for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty much over my illness. Uh, weekend was good. Didn't do a ton. Just kind of hung around the house, went out and had some dinner one night and um, went and saw Top Gun again uh allison hadn't seen seen it it. allison hadn't seen it yet and we decided to go on sunday and had a great time and um yeah yeah everything uh everything is good um just you know today was weird let's just get it out today was weird today was weird uh yeah i had a good weekend golfing with the boys went over to the metro area in st louis and i had a nice little golf day saturday with the boys from from home and uh spent saturday with them so that was good Um, but we're just going to jump into it because I do want to keep this episode a little bit shorter. Um, and we have some topics that could go pretty lengthy. So, uh, what caught your eye this week, Logan? (sighs) Well, the, the other news that's not (laughs) related to sports that broke today. I don't know if you saw this or not. I saw you just tweeting about it. Yeah. Um, and this isn't a big topic for most people to listen to this show, but it's just kind of interesting that there was a a uh warner brothers had a batgirl movie in the works now for they've been filming it they they've been in the post-production stage uh this is a feature movie that was supposed to drop in theaters starring uh, a girl by the name of leslie grace who was in um in the heights which came out a couple years ago which is a great movie she was great in that i believe michael keaton was supposed to be in this movie uh reprising his role as batman from the 80s 90s whenever that was uh, they just decided to just cut the movie all together uh, in like the the late stages of post production. I think it's strange, especially in the days of like streaming services, when they could easily just drop this movie onto HBO Max and just be like, okay, well, it's not very good, but here it is. They just decided to cut it all together, uh, which is just a it's just a confounding issue um it raises a lot of questions they also did the same thing to a scooby-doo movie a a prequel to their scooby-doo movie that came out a couple years ago that was supposed to just go on to hbo max they just decided to just not do that period uh it's just there's just some confusing things that happened today so today's been a big news day in general for sports wise especially but then that also circulating too is just kind of like what the hell is going on in the world right now um so without thinking of anything else, that was the first thing that came to my mind. It was just kind of strange. And uh, yeah. How about you? What caught your eye this week? Uh, It's a nice little statue that is on our mantle here. My fiance now won her second career Emmy. Um, So yeah, props to Christy. She won an Emmy uh, for the second time. Round of applause. 
Uh, um, no plus. The That's tornadoes, awesome. um, tornadoes that touched down in December here in Kentucky. Uh, her station WDRB won for best team coverage. Um, so yeah, her second Emmy. So she was proud of that. Um, I've been bragging on her because like she didn't even want to post it to social media. I'm like, girl, you just want a freaking Emmy. <laughs> like you did it like, for yeah, her. But it's... I did. I did. I basically <laughs> wrote the post for her. Um, I was like, if I won 30 Emmys, I would still be bragging. Hey, I just won another Emmy. It's an Emmy <laughs> brag a little bit. So I'm bragging on her, on her, on her behalf. So that's, that's awesome. uh, a big moment, big moment. Congratulations. Um, yes. Yes. I will thank her for you because I'm not sure if she listens to our show. I'd like to think she does, but I don't watch her newscast. So I she don't was know like our she first, <laughs> she was like our first follower on Twitter. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm sure she doesn't. Why would she? Right. I don't know why anyone does. <clears throat> um, we're moving on though to our question portion. What do you think? Last week we asked, do you think if do you think Juan Soto will be traded before the trade deadline? Got 110 votes on that, and 66 percent of you were correct in saying that yes, Juan Soto would get traded before the deadline. He was. We will get into that a little bit later. This week, we're simply going to grade the Cardinals trade deadline. A, B, C, D, or worse. Um, Cubs, we talked about throwing one in for the Cubs too, but it was just a weird deadline for them. I don't think anyone expected them to make moves. The Cardinals were expected to make some moves. They did make some, but not the move that they were favored for to make for a while. So uh, we will get into that, but that is our question this week. Grade the Cardinals trade deadline. Speaking of, we'll jump right into it. The Cardinals did acquire... Uh, last night, Monday night, Jose Quintana, former Cub, former White Sox, former San Francisco Giant, I think, former Pirate. 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 So where they got him from, they acquired Jose Quintana and Chris Stratton for a couple minor leaguers, uh, Johan Oviedo, and I think his name was Malcolm Nunez, who was a, a pretty power, I think he's a power hitting infielder, maybe corner outfielder. And then just now, right at the deadline, they acquire Jordan Montgomery, which, okay. But you give up Harrison Bader to get Jordan Montgomery. And I just read on Twitter, you give up Harrison Bader and either a player to be named later or cast considerations for Jordan Montgomery. As an outsider, uh, neither a Yankees follower or a Cubs follower, would you rather have Harrison Bader or Jordan Montgomery? Well, you need pitching, right? I mean, we'll that's kind of that. that's yes, kind of like there's a also thing. another thing here, right? No, I know, and I'll get to that. You need pitching, yep, but you also need that defense <laughs> um, that Harrison Bader brings to the table. Uh, I mean, I think in a vacuum, I think I would rather have Jordan Montgomery, um, but in okay. the Cardinal situation. I don't know. That's tough because Bader, I know he's not, he doesn't bring much to the table uh, with his bat necessarily. Uh, he's, but, he was hitting 250 with five home runs, but he was, until he got hurt, he was leading the league in steals and he's a gold glover. Yeah. So, I mean, I, it's, it's, it was an interesting move. I, I don't know that I totally got that one. Um, I'm not sure what the reasoning was there. Um, but I mean, whatever, if, if it's, everybody's happy, I mean, I would love to hear your thoughts on this because I just wanted to hear your thoughts on a lot of the Cardinals related things. Yeah. That's, that's what days. I was going to ask. Where so, do you want me to start? There are just, three different just ones. Just go with start. all of it. Just all of it, all the above. Okay. Start with, so, start with the two, the trades that actually did happen. Okay. So today Montgomery for Bader is a fair trade. Um, there are other pieces thrown into it which probably won't amount to much, the cast considerations or the player to be named later. So it is basically Montgomery for uh, Bader. Montgomery's having a good year. He leads the AL in starts with 21. He's got a 369 ERA. Um, he's three and three for the Yankees. I mean, quality left-handed arm. That's what the Cardinals needed. But the issue is all reports say that the Cardinals did not pull the trigger on the Juan Soto trade because the Padres wanted Carlson 
and it said top prospect. So you're assuming Jordan Walker and the Cardinals would not include Dylan Carlson because they're concerned about their outfield depth because Harrison Bader is hurt. Tyler O'Neill came back, but had some cramps and is not in the lineup again tonight. So he is hurt. So you're throwing Lars Newtbar out there. The Cardinals did not want to lose the outfield depth. So where do they trade from to get Jordan Montgomery? You're a defending center, gold glove center fielder. What kind of logic is that? If it's Jordan Montgomery for a mid high level top 10 prospect, sure. But when you're, and these, again, these reports could be wrong. The reports on the Carlson hiccup could be wrong. But if you did not go get Juan Soto because you were worried about your outfield depth, so you didn't include Dylan Carlson, then you trade an outfielder in Harrison Bader to go get Jordan Montgomery. What are we doing, Mo? What are we doing? I have a couple of thoughts as an outsider. Um, I understand Juan Soto is great. I understand Juan Soto maybe maybe the best player in baseball. I, I totally get that. Um, I also understand that he's 23 years old and that he has however many more, two more years of two club years control after left after this. Uh, I, I get all that. And I think that he is worth whatever package you want to throw at him. I think he is worth that. But my one concern if I were the Cardinals or if I were a Cardinal fan with giving up that package for Juan Soto, are they, are they going to extend him? Because if not the Cardinals, would they have extended I him? I mean, would they have paid him what he wanted? Because if not, have. that's a lot to give a player for just two years. It is. It's just a lot. And we'll get to as the good one as the Soto player stuff is, in a second. But yeah, you're you're totally right. I mean, totally that's just kind of where I stand on it. And I understand where you're coming from. It doesn't make sense, the whole depth thing. If that was the reasoning to then turn around and, and trade away Harrison Bader. Yeah, I agree. That that makes zero sense. Um, and I can't really explain that. Um, but the Soto trade in general, that's just those are kind of just been my general thoughts on him, especially from the Cardinal standpoint. Um I was just curious. I mean, I was just curious because I see some Cardinal fans didn't want to make that trade. Some did want to make that trade. Well, I told uh, you last can, week. Yeah, go ahead. I said I can kind of see it both ways. I mean, I it's hard to turn down an offer for the best player in baseball at age 23. Like I I get that, but I don't know. I could see both sides of that, but I agree. The the reasoning being the Outfield depth, um, and then for what you do later on is is definitely a conundrum for sure. Yeah, same thing I said last week. The pressing need for the Cardinals was pitching. But when you have the pieces and Juan Soto is available, he is a generational talent. Even if you only get him for two and a half years, if he doesn't resign, the Cardinals window is now. You've got Goldschmidt for two more years. You've After this, you've got Arenado. With a couple more years after this, Wayno's last year, Yachty's not maybe not Wayno's last year, Yachty's last year, Pujols last year, Wayno at the end of his career. The window is now, and Soto would have solidly made you a postseason threat. So we'll get to Soto in a little bit. The other trade the Cardinals made, Jose Quintana, um, again, innings eater is pitching very well this year. So I, Last night when it happened, I was all in on Soto. Thought the Cardinals were a major player to get Juan Soto. I wanted Juan Soto or Frankie Montas or one of the top tier pitchers or something like that. So when they trade for Quintana, I was a little upset. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not going to lie. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But his numbers are even better than Jordan Montgomery. 20 starts, 3.5 ERA, 119 ERA plus, which uh, 100 is the league average for era plus and he's at 119 which is the best that he's been since 2016 when he was an all-star with the white Sox. so um quintana is a is a quality it is what the cardinals needed both these guys are what the cardinals needed to eat innings because there are so many injuries so looking back i don't know that the trade deadline was a massive failure 
it's a little weird though. It's a little weird with what the Cardinals did because you did get two things that you do need. This team desperately needed arms. They got two arms that have been performing well, but when you're a favorite and people are saying that you have the best package to get Juan Soto and then you don't for a reason of hanging on to outfield depth and then you trade an outfielder, just confusing. Just doesn't make a lot of sense um, from a fan perspective. So I get it. There's that. For the Juan Soto stuff. I said it last week, kind of said it just now. Cardinals had all the pieces, had all the pieces to do it. And Mazalak was stout. He was stout. So the issue is two big, I have two big issues with this. The Cardinals not pursuing it or, or getting him. One is Dylan Carlson. Already talked about the reports that, they were very reluctant and they would not include Carlson in a trade for Juan Soto. Theoretically, you're trading Carlson, but you're getting Soto on your major league roster. So you're upgrading your major league roster straight up because everything else was going to be prospects that probably didn't pan out. So this ends in one of two ways for Dylan Carlson. And I think one of them is very much more likely than the other. Either he takes this and says, wow, the Cardinals really believe in me. I better get my ass in gear. And he turns into a yearly all-star who is a staple in center field for 10 to 15 years for the Cardinals. Or two, it completely cripples his career because he will always he will always be referred to now by Cardinals fans as the guy that the Cardinals wouldn't give up to get Juan Soto. And that's a lot of pressure on a 23-year-old kid who hasn't lived up to expectations as of now. So I I agree with with what you're coming with where you're coming from there. Um he it is a it's it is a very interesting spot for him to be in as a player. Um that can be a lot of pressure and I mean there's a lot of factors that are go, going to go into this. Um my question for you and this is a this is a genuine question. And I know it has been said that the Cardinals were one of the three finalists, the three most likely suitors had one of the best packages available. And I know we've talked about that before. And I, I think from my stance, when I mentioned it in our show last week, I was referencing the Cardinals having the best package, of, but they would also like not hinder them any. Is there a Cardinal package that they could have sent for to the nationals that would have been as good as what they got from the Padres. Like that's a legitimate question in terms of prospect <clears throat> rankings and all of these things, because so... I mean, they got a haul. They got a legitimate haul. I mean, I know if Jordan Walker and Dylan Carlson were involved, obviously that would have been super. Yeah. I'm just thinking like after that, what would it have been? Actually one of my, one of my, I think our college buddies tweeted this out. Let me see if it was him or not. Slaby? Yes. Yeah. It was. Slaby it was Chris it. Yes. Slaby. Um, he said, so the, so the Cardinals equivalent based on rankings would be Jordan Walker um, is basically McKenzie Gore. Gore has exhausted his rookie. So has Abrams. Gore and Abrams have exhausted their uh, rookie eligibility. So Walker would be Gore. Gorman or Carlson would be Abrams because they were Gorman and Carlson were both top 10 prospects when they exhausted their eligibility. Libertor is a higher ranked prospect than Hassel. Yvonne Herrera is probably not quite as good as James Wood. And then Connor Thomas and Luke and Baker. Um, Luke and Baker, I think is the, is a top 10 prospect. I don't know much about Thomas. Thomas would be Susana. Um, and then Um, uh, the Padres threw in ended up being Luke Voigt was gonna be Eric Hosmer, so you would assume maybe like a Juan Yepes or something, or a uh Brendan Donovan, something like that. Right. I think it's comparable. I think it's no, very I'm sure comparable. it is. I'm sure it is. Yeah, 
Um, it's just interesting because, you know, I've been yeah. looking at a lot of these things lately and I just wasn't sure exactly what that package would be. Um, yeah. But obviously it would have made a lot of sense for them. And if the Carlson thing is what held it up, that's going to, that could look rough. Yeah. That could look rough down the road or it could look fine. He could turn into be a legitimate superstar and maybe not on Juan Soto level, but you know, comparable to an, to, yeah. to a degree and, yeah. and then it'll be fine. Um, but you never know with these prospect deals. I mean, some of these prospects will pan out. Some of them won't be anything more than that's, a replacement level player. That's some of these thing. prospects, even top prospects, don't even make it to the major leagues. So that's my thing. It's hard if to. It's, it's package, just hard to know. If it's a package for five prospects for one proven All Star MVP candidate, you you got to go get the MVP candidate because prospects are prospects for a reason because you don't know <clears> what they're going to be. Yep, I bet. Gore has shown flashes, but he had a terrible year last year. He had fallen off the radar until he got to the bigs this year. Abrams has shown nothing in his first stint. Hassel is three or four years away. Wood is probably the most potential guy. He's like a 6'7", 240-pound first baseman corner outfielder. And then the pitcher throws 100, but no one knows really a lot about him. There's just a lot of question marks. So yeah, we'll see. For sure. My other thing with this... And this could be just me being a pessimist because he's been my favorite player before he got to the Cardinals. And then now he's on the Cardinals, the first jersey I ever bought. It concerns Nolan Arenado. He's already said this year, just last month, less than a month ago, he said, quote, I don't want to win the wild card anymore. Obviously, you get to playoffs. It's great. If we get in, great. But you want to win the division. It's important to win the division. I've never won it. I would like to be a part of that. He said that to the St. Louis media, which I would assume John Mazalak saw. And you get Jose Quintana and Jordan Montgomery when you could have had Juan Soto. <laughs> Your star player that can opt out after this year. He can say, nope, I don't like the way we're going. I'm going somewhere else. And yeah. you don't make a big splash. You don't go get a guy that could be an MVP candidate. <laughs> could you imagine, again, they probably wouldn't have the arms, but could you imagine a 2-3-4 of Goldschmidt, Soto, Arenado? Yikes. <laughs> Is that better? Is that better than Tatis, Machado, Soto? No. Probably not. No. Probably not. I mean, assuming Fernando Tatis is healthy, because uh, I don't know if you weren't getting Josh Bell in that deal. No, and, Cardinals uh, would not have got Josh Bell. So the fact that they also got Josh Bell. So now the heart. That's of their another order, thing. Would the now Cardinals the have their order? Would the Cardinals is, have had to match the five players we just compared if they didn't want Bell? If it was just true. for Soto. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. But that I mean the heart of that order, man, when they're healthy. Tatis, Machado, Soto, Bell. Good lord. Is it a hot take to say that I still don't think they're the favorite in the NL? No, I don't think they're the Vegas favorite. I think it's still the Dodgers. Dodgers. I still at like one the point Dodgers they said better. at one point on one of the broadcasts I was watching, they said they were like still fifth in the Vegas odds or something. No way. That's what I that's what I had heard. I don't know if that's true or not, but and that could have been before Brandon Drury, I don't know, but um, I mean they're good. I'm I'm excited to watch the Padres now for the rest of the season. So, yeah, I'm sure Curtis is too. Yeah, of course should have called should have called him up and had we a, should we probably could yes but probably not do anything send in the Zoom link see if he see Phil <laughs> see Phil hop in. So that's the Cardinals. Uh, they do make two moves that are quality moves. They are filling a need for the team. Um. We shall see if it's good enough. Um, I I don't know that they can get into a wild card. I don't know that they can catch the Brewers. The Brewers made a confusing move as well. The Brewers traded away the best closer in baseball, Josh Hader, for yeah. um, Taylor Rogers, Denilson, 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 Lament, and a couple prospects. Um, I got the move. Um, it's a move that they made because Hader is going to make fifteen plus million. Uh, starting next year and it's a price the brewers didn't want to pay so 
um, trade him away for uh, a couple other arms when you've got Devin Williams that can move in and be your closer. It makes a little bit of sense. It was confusing when I first saw it, but again, makes a little bit of sense because they don't want to go into a full-on rebuild and they're getting some pieces back. So we'll see if the Cardinals can catch the Brewers. I don't have a lot of confidence. I think if the Cardinals make the playoffs, it's it's a wild card spot. So you want to talk about the Cubs? (laughs) Sure. Uh, I mean – that what they did today kind of kind of ruined my moment of the week last week or my <sighs> what caught my eye last week. But um, the Happ and Contreras are are there for the long haul, I guess. Uh, yeah, um, it has it, been an interesting couple days. Um, you know, they had their last home game uh, would have been on Sunday, I guess, or whenever it was. Um, had their applause from. From the Wrigley faithful, they had their big hug at the end of the game the other night. Um, assuming Wilson was out the door, I think everybody assumed Wilson was out the door. I think the chances were pretty high on Hap. Um, and it come, it turns out that neither of them were dealt. Uh, the Cubs did trade away three relief pitchers, which was pretty expected, especially two of them. Uh, David Robertson, who's been a bounce back. Uh, closer for them who's been one of the best closers in baseball uh is headed to the Phillies uh Michael Givens who's had a pretty solid year uh who is expected to be dealt he ended up going to the Mets towards the very end of the deadline the surprise was yesterday uh spent sending Scott Efros to the Yankees I um, love that Efros has by a, the way <laughs> he has an interesting story I don't know if you're if familiar if you're familiar with him but uh, he was pretty much done. I mean, he was a pitching prospect, and the Cubs, he just wasn't having any, any success. And then one day, one of his pitching coaches or somebody said, why don't we lower your arm slot a little bit and just see how this goes? And he became a essentially a sidearm throwing reliever and kind of restarted his, his traje- trajectory. Uh, and he's been great out of the bullpen this year. Um, I think I was a surprise that they were, that they dealt him. Uh, they got a good piece in return for him. I mean, Hayden was, was Necky is a, is a good prospect from the Yankees, <clears throat> uh, who can probably fight for a rotation spot next year, uh, which they're going to need it. I, I mean, there's about eight guys that probably could have a shot to be in the rotation. We'll see how many of them actually pan out, but, uh, whatever. I mean, the return for any of those. I mean, it is what it is. You weren't going to get a lot for Givens on its own, on his own. Uh, you got another pitcher for David Robertson. We'll see how um, Ben Brown turns out. I have a friend, Ben Brown, who might listen to this. Shout out to you, Ben Brown. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and then they obviously didn't trade Wilson Contreras and Ian Happ. Uh, that's, that's the bigger story. Um, in fact, other than the Juan Soto thing, I think that is the bigger story of the day. Uh, biggest story of the day that Wilson Contreras did not get traded. This is a player who supposedly, according to reports, the Cubs have not had extension talks with him. Um, and he is, his contract is up at the end of this year. So uh, I, uh, it was just kind of, as I said, it was assumed that he was out the door. There was the reports that the Padres were wanting him. Uh, I'd heard the, you know, the Astros were looking for a catcher. They ended up getting one. Uh, the Rays were looking for a catcher. The Mets were looking for some help. Um, I mean, you heard there were these reports and rumors circulating for the past few weeks that, um, you know, teams don't really want to add a big impact impact bat catcher because it could disrupt the flow of your pitchers, which is understandable. Uh, and then so the argument from there is, though, is how much is he worth if he's just going to be a DH and a backup catcher? Um which is fair. I think what ultimately happened is that the Cubs were banking on the Padres. I think they were banking on a package deal for Contreras and Robertson and maybe even Ian Happ for a big haul similar to probably what they got for Juan Soto. I mean, all things considered, they weren't going to get all of those guys, but they were probably counting on that to happen. They thought that the Cardinals or the Dodgers were going to end up getting Soto and that the Padres were going to be in the hunt for, for some impact bats and a, and a bullpen arm. Um, obviously that didn't happen. The, the Padres went out and got Juan Soto and Josh Bell, and they all of a sudden didn't need that. 
Um, the, I mean, you could still make a case that they probably still could have taken Wilson Contreras, but uh, the other report is that the Cubs had too high, too high of an asking price. I don't know. I, I don't know what's happening there. Um, I am not upset that Wilson Contreras and Ian Happ are both still Cubs. I, I am not upset by that at all. Um, I really enjoy both of those players. Ian has struggled for a lot of his career up to this point. He's finally broken out and been consistent, had success. I would really love to see that continue on. Uh, I would love to see these two be a focal point of the next great Cubs team, quote, end quote. Um, hashtag next great Cubs team. I don't know if they will. I would, I mean, I would love for the Cubs to extend Wilson. Uh, I don't know the business behind this now with the qualifying offer and the draft picks and all that nonsense. I would rather we just not deal with that. That's kind of why I just wanted it to be over. Um, Ian went on, uh, the score, uh, this, this afternoon or this morning, talking to the guys on the radio, basically saying this is a lonely place to be in this, to be in this situation. And for Mm -hmm. them, for the Cubs to put them both through this for however many weeks, and then for them to ultimately not get dealt. Wilson Contreras removed everything Cubs related from his Instagram page like a week ago. So like, do those pictures just get added back? Um, (laughs) I don't know, man. It's, (coughs) it's both confusing yet kind of happy feelings i guess um the cubs aren't going anywhere right now they're clearly one of the worst teams in baseball um i'm surprised that they didn't trade those guys i'm surprised they didn't trade somebody like a patrick wisdom uh rafael ortega i think all those guys were certainly on the table and i think they all could have been useful to somebody um i don't know what this means though i have not, not had enough time to dissect this uh, and to decide what this means long term or short term, but either way, it's it's both confusing yet kind of. I don't know what the word is, but it, I mean, it, as I said, it's I, there's kind of some happy feelings now, I guess, uh, that they're that they're both going to be around now for at least the rest of the year. So, whatever the Cubs aren't going anywhere. It's a very confusing day, but um, hey, you know, last year at this time, I was practically crying on this show. So yes. Um, like whatever. I mean, I wasn't going to be like that if they were gone. Like I was assuming they were gone. Like I'm just more just confused now than anything. Yep. Um, I think the moral of the story though, is that the Cubs had too high of an asking price and teams weren't willing to meet it. Um, okay, great. Uh, now go out and extend Wilson Contreras, please. I, they don't have another Miguel Amaya is a cut is a catcher in the system that at one point was considered a high a top prospect or at least a highly rated prospect. I don't think he really is that at this point. Um, they don't really have somebody else really in the mix. So extend him, make him the future and let's just move forward with it. So weird day, weird day. Yeah, for sure. Let's run through everything else that happened. Um, Eric Hosmer was included in the Soto deal, but he had a no trade clause to Washington. He exercised that no trade clause and then they shipped him to Boston. Um, so shipping up to, shipping up to Boston. Uh, um, so Luke Voigt is now included in that Washington um, San Diego deal instead of Eric Hosmer. Um, Jorge Lopez, closer for the Orioles, went to Minnesota for some prospects. Minnesota also got Tyler Molly, Maley, Maley from yeah. Cincinnati, starting pitcher. Joey Gallo went to the Dodgers um, yesterday. Frankie Montas to the Yankees for some prospects. They also got Lou Trevino from Oakland in the same trade. A couple days before that, Luis Castillo from Cincinnati to Seattle for a pretty good haul, uh, including Noel V. Marte, a very good prospect, shortstop prospect. Noah Syndergaard to the Phillies, along with, like Logan said, David Robertson. And then uh, Brandon Drury also went to the um, Padres. Uh, Whit Merrifield to the Blue Jays, a buzzer beater trade there, and Brandon Marsh to the Phillies as well. Anything else? I'm sure there's something ben attendee, I missed. Ben, ben attendee, attendee to the Yankees a days as well. Yankees. Yeah. So uh, ended up being pretty crazy um, as the MLB trade deadline has been the last couple of years. Anything else baseball before we go? Um, I was going to say I'm going to put this out there just so I verbalize it. 
The Cardinals currently are three games behind the Brewers for the division and one game out of the wild card. Let's see where they finish the year. See where how these trades finish deadline. the year. I I'm not sure they make the playoffs. I I don't know because who's ahead of them? The Brewers didn't they, do a whole lot. They're not they're not getting a wild card spot. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because not. the team's so, ahead of them. Atlanta is not going to fall. They inked uh, Austin Riley to a long term deal. They have their entire core in place for like ten years. Padres got a whole lot better. Then you got the Dodgers and the Mets, who are already 65 wins on the year. And the Phillies were aggressive and did a lot um, at the deadline to improve their team. And six teams make it. So I don't believe. The are Cubs, they back? The Cubs pictures are back on Wilson's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so if I had to project, I don't think the Cardinals make the playoffs. But we shall see. Moving on now to the NFL Uh the NFL around noon today did break some pretty big news. Um, <laughs> yeah. The Miami Dolphins have lost their 2023 first round draft pick and their 2024 third round draft pick for violating the integrity of the game. Um, I will say they have two 2023 first round picks, so they will still pick in the first round. They will just not have their own first round pick. So this stems from a couple things, tampering and tanking accusations. Um, the NFL did a six month investigation into the Dolphins that covered from 2019 to 2022. Um, again, tampering with players and coaches who were under con- contract with other teams and tanking in 2019 to improve their 2020 draft position. Um, and if owner Steven Ross offered Brian Flores, who was the head coach at the time, benefits for losing games if he straight up said hey i'll give you a hundred thousand dollars if you lose this game and the nfl found that this is just crazy the dolphins had communication with tom brady in 2019 as early as august of 2019 continuing through the 2019 season while he was with the patriots this is before his free agency he is with the patriots and the dolphins were trying to trying to uh, get him to Miami. Uh, again, they had impermissible communication with him after 2021. And th- those began after the season and covered him possibly becoming a player owner partner with the Dolphins. Getting an ownership stake in the Dolphins will also be in their quarterback. Um, and then again in 2020, uh, January, the Dolphins had contact with Sean Payton's agent before he announced his retirement. So he was still under contract with the Saints. And they tried to get Peyton to be their head coach. Um, then once he retired, they also reached out to Peyton and they had to go through the Saints to get their permission. And the Saints were like, no, we're not letting you now. Um, but so there's the tampering. That's what they got in trouble for was the tampering. But the Dolphins did not intentionally lose games, nor did anyone with the club instruct Flores to do so. But what owner Stephen Ross did say was he did express belief in 20 in 2019 that the 2020 draft should take precedent over the 2019 season those talks were with other members from the front office and Flores took that as being asked to lose games so when Stephen Ross said hey I think the 2020 draft is more important than winning games in 2019 it was interpreted as him telling people to lose games in 2019 a um, couple of the witnesses of that conversation said that the words are a little misconstrued there or taken out of context and they thought he was joking so so yeah they're without a first round pick and a third round pick ross is suspended for six games through october 17th 2022 and fined 1.5 million dollars so not really a story that we would normally cover a ton or talk about a ton i don't think either of us really care about the dolphins or anything it's just a that's just a wild story man what a mess <laughs> <laughs> right? what um what a mess that organization man holy cow they just they have all sorts of problems coming out of there um yeah i mean the whole tampering thing is just kind of funny because like how many nba teams have been oh my gosh of, 
tampering yeah. uh, in the last couple years alone. Um, so 20 seconds after free agency hits, James Harden has agreed to a deal. <laughs> like, how? 20 seconds? What? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just kind of it's one just kind of, of my wacky. Not really takeaways, but I. Did you notice that Stephen Ross got the same number of games suspension for doing this as Deshaun Watson did for 30 women allegedly? Um, of, yeah. Alleging that he did what he did. Yeah. Six that's, games for Deshaun that's, Watson. Uh, the Deshaun Watson thing is a whole different conversation that. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know that either you or I are qualified to discuss too much. On no, the show. no, uh, but other uh, than he probably should be in more trouble than what they. Yeah. Between all that and uh, the, the Cubs trade deadline decisions, I just have so many questions <laughs> and I, I don't think that you're the person that's going to answer them for me. So we should probably just move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. When 30 women are accusing you of something. <laughs> It's hard to believe, yeah, that you didn't do something. Uh, and then a, a somber note that I do want to touch on. Mm. NBA lost a great, great Bill Russell passed away a couple days ago. 11-time champion in the NBA, I believe. Two-time NCAA champion. Uh, the finals MVP trophy is named after him, I believe. Is that right? Mm. He always presents that. the finals MVP trophy. Um, I mean, one of the top 10, 15 players ever. Did he spend his whole career with the Celtics? I think so, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I think he was 88 years old, something like that. So, um, he, um, yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot of interviews and things uh, lately, people talking about him. And I know that, uh, like, Shaquille O'Neal was on the Rich Eisen show today um, talking about oh, him. Yeah. And he was just, I mean, he just meant a lot to a lot of people. Um you know, he obviously played long before our generation was around, but a um, lot of history, won a lot of rings. Um, just he's just a guy that a lot of people in those circles think thought very highly of. So, um, yeah, that was oh, def- yeah. definitely a sad day. What'd you learn? What'd you find I'm out? Looking up his basketball reference page. Oh, over under or how many points per game do you think he averaged? Oh, I don't know. How many seasons did he play? I'm counting right now. I mean, it got to be 13. 25. He averaged 15.1 points per game. Really? I mean, I guess I knew he wasn't like a. And 22.5 rebounds per game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holy cow. He averaged in 1964, he averaged 15 points and 24.7 rebounds per game. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Uh, he's a Hall of Famer, 12 time All Star, 11 time NBA champ, 11 time All NBA, five time MVP. Obviously on the 75th anniversary team. So. Yeah, he's uh he's a legend. He's a legend. Died on the 31st of July. So, rest in peace Bill Russell, one of the greats. Um shaped the game to the way it was uh is today. Um I just realized we did not talk any Illini. Um Illini football open training camp on Saturday. Not a whole lot to talk about. Neither of us are there covering training camp. So we're just seeing what Brett and the guys at WCIA and and Bryce and Andy and Jeremy and Joey and the line I inquire what all the beat guys were all on. That's all we're seeing. And it's not a whole lot because they don't have access. Like uh Levy Smith gave access to training camp. Um, the one note is that Samari Collier transferred quarterback. Um, I listened to Bielema's availability on the first day of camp. I think he announced it Friday or Saturday. I think Friday he announced it and camped open Saturday and Bielema straight up said, yeah, he he wasn't going to play. He came out and said yeah. he had fallen out of the depth chart. Um, so uh, he wished him luck and all that stuff. And we do too, but um, it was kind of obvious that he's not the kind of guy or he wasn't progressing the way they wanted him to progress. Um, and this staff already has three or four guys that they have handpicked uh, to play quarterback. So wasn't really a fit. So 
Um, and I don't think they lose a whole lot of depth in the quarterback room. I think there's six or seven quarterbacks on the roster already. So I don't think yep. there's anything else to add for football, really. Not a really not a, a big shot to go. No. Um here in the next couple of weeks we'll start we'll start doing some preview stuff and looking at schedules and seeing who's gonna do what and all that all that good stuff. But anything else sports related, I don't have any we don't have anything written down. Um, on no, the rundown, so. I'm sure there's something that we're not thinking of, but obviously the, the trade deadline was uh, the biggest yeah. thing in the sports world uh, for the most part until the, the big NFL news today. But uh, no, I mean, I think that covered most everything. So, all right. Um, movies, TV, anything else on that front? I did watch the gray man. You did watch the gray man uh, while I was watching elf. You were watching you, the gray man. And I watched elf later that night. Um <laughs> Uh, it was fine. Gray Man was was an entertaining movie. Right. Um, the Russo brothers are just kind of. They kind of I don't know that I want to say that they peaked so early in their career, but they have struggled to kind of get it together after uh, Winter Soldier and two Avengers movies. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's fine. It was entertaining. Chris Evans was kind of playing the same role that he played in Knives Out. Um, yeah. And uh, it was it was fun movie. Fun movie. Um haven't really watched anything else recently that needs to be discussed, but uh, hopefully trying to get to quite a bit here the next few weeks. Cause I got to catch up on some stuff and then uh, Oscar season's right around the corner. So there's gonna be plenty of movies to talk about here soon. Big brother. We haven't even talked about big brother on the show yep. yet. Yep. Do you want to talk about to big brother? Well, we have about nine um, minutes left in our zoom meeting. I'm going through Twitter. I just want to say John Mazalak talked to St. Louis media. Um, he said Padres were willing to give more than the Cardinals said he knew last night, not today that the Cardinals were out on Soto, which means he had more time to go get a high quality starting pitcher. And you got Jordan Montgomery and Jose Quintana. So there's that. But uh, I texted you last week and I told you they voted out my pick to win last week. Yep. Mira. Amira. So I don't know. I don't know who's going to, I don't know who's going to win this one. No, I mean, it's still a little early. I, I do agree. I think she was on a good track uh, to go pretty far. They, the guys just kind of caught on to her. Um, and that's essentially all that happened uh, last week. I mean, that, that new Alliance kind of formed and I would, I would like to see that new, that new Alliance, the leftovers kind of hang on for a little while. Um, I think that's a, Group of mostly the people in that house that I really like. I mean, there's a few, you know, on the outside or whatever. Or, um, but I, I just kind of like that group for the most part. So um, I'm glad that Taylor, I don't know, the whole Taylor thing, there seems to be a lot of negative things being put in her direction inside the house. A lot of it that we're not really seeing on the show. Um, so for them to finally kind of show us some of that, I think was kind of a, an opening, like an eye opening experience for a lot of um, people that just watch and don't follow anything. Um, but I don't know. I, I think there's a few people in there that I think could kind of hang around for a while. Um, I'm not totally caught up on what's going on this week, but I think I have an idea of who's going home, uh, which I'm not upset about, but I, I was going to try and go all season without looking at my spoiler website, but I got the urge today and I looked. Who do you think's going home this week? I know who's going home. I think I know who's going home. You want me to say it in front of all these people? And spoiler God? alert. Uh, mute your mute our podcast. Close your ears. Turn it off for 10 seconds. Who do you think's going home, Logan? Uh, Nicole. Okay. Let's wait a couple seconds. Let the people come back. Okay. Wow. Really? Is that not what you think? No, I'm just trying to like act for, <laughs> for the audience. Yeah, I, I, th- I think that's who it is. You say, are you reading diff- something different than I do? My problem, I don't go just to the, the way they were talking on Sunday's I just, episode. I just follow too many accounts on Twitter that I just have never unfollowed. And yeah. so like sometimes I'll just see them and sometimes I won't because I follow way too many accounts in general. Um, yeah. So that's kind of my other problem. But um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's kind of been an interesting season, but. We'll see. He usually gets a little better as we get halfway through. So we're we're getting to that point. All right. Uh, I think we started it. we started the terminal list last night. Uh that's the Chris Pratt one. What, what do you think? Pratt. I haven't watched it yet. We've watched one episode and it's um 
I think what did what was the word that we used? Emotional. It's a little emotional. The first episode. There's a lot going on. Um, it's got some, I it's got some potential. I see it. And we're gonna stick okay. with it. It's only eight episodes, so shouldn't be too long. But but the, yeah, that's where we're at right now. I don't think there's anything else. You got anything else? Uh, no. No, right. I don't think so. We're gonna shut it down then. Um, I think this should be close to an hour. Uh, maybe hopefully a little less but um, again give us a follow like subscribe all that good stuff we do appreciate it Uh, we're gonna likely get weekly episodes out now that uh, football is literally right around the corner Um, training camp starting Uh, we have an NFL preseason game in two days Uh, the Hall of Fame game to watch but uh, none of the stars are gonna play I saw the Jacks today said that Trevor Lawrence will not play Travis Etienne will not play Derek Carr Josh Jacobs like Devontae Adams none of the guys are gonna big guys are gonna play but you better believe it'll be on my tv because it is football and i am so ready um follow us on twitter facebook instagram shoot us an email if you really want to uh let us know what you want to talk about and um if that's nothing else that's been episode 64 for logan i'm craig we'll see you next time happy national boob day national what boob (laughs) thank you (laughs) Ha, ha, ha.